This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 202 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I am talking with Heidi and Tori Ganahl, who run the site She Factor. And we're going to be talking about how to effectively cultivate community within your brand. This was such a great interview, and it took a turn that I was not expecting, but it was such a great turn to really talk about how women can take a stance and really start to move forward in their businesses by creating a, that sense of community. All right, let's dive in. All right. Welcome, Tori and Heidi, to the podcast. I'm so excited to have both of you here. We're excited, too. It's such a joy to be here and share our stories and uh, what an incredible audience you have. Thanks so much. Well, let's jump right in. Will you guys introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about your business? Yeah, so we are Heidi and Tori. I'm Tori, she's Heidi. (laughs) And I am her daughter. So we're a mother-daughter team. And we started our business together about a year and a half ago. It's called She Factor. And it really started due to my experience um, as a... I'm 25 and I was graduating from college. And I'd done all the things in college to get myself through as a double major. And I was president of my sorority and president of Panhellenic. And what I really found when I was at that point of graduating was that I, one, had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And two, um, I just was so lost and confused about what that would look like. And lucky for me, I have an amazing mom who guided me through that. And then going into the real world realizing that it's not what it seems and society tells you it's going to be all these things and it it never ends up being that way. So um, I took a job that I wasn't passionate about and I was miserable. I was working 60 to 80 hours a week and just everything in my life started to crumble. So um, that's kind of where the idea for She Factor was born. And I'll let you talk a little bit more about how you came up with all of the logistics of the company and whatnot. (laughs) That sounds good. Well, I'm Heidi, I'm mama and, uh, I am an entrepreneur. I built the country's largest pet care franchise called Camp Bow Wow. And it's a, a doggy day and overnight camp. And I sold it in late 2014 after building it for about 15 years to a $100 million brand. And um, at that time, I had you know my four kids. Tori was getting ready to graduate college, and I have little ones. At that point, I think they were about five. My daughter, Holly, was five, and my twins were two. So it was a bit much trying to run the organization and um, be a mom to all four of my kiddos. But at that time, I started to um, get more involved in education reform in Colorado, and I ran for regent at the University of Colorado, which is like the director of the university system, and started hanging out with a lot of young people that were, you know, about to graduate or, you know, just in college and trying to figure out what they wanted to do with their life. And I really saw this deer in the headlights look like, what do we do? How do we navigate this? And I would mentor a lot of young people and find that there weren't a lot of tools or resources to really help them launch their lives and do what they were passionate about. So that's where the idea for She Factor was born. And it's really a methodology to help young people, specifically young women, navigate the world, figure out how to land in a place that they love and create a life that they love, not just work, but a holistic life that they love. I love it. So I, you were speaking and for me, putting myself back in those college days and I have 15 years on you, Tori, but I felt the same way. I remember applying to go to get my graduate degree right away because I was like, yep, not ready for the real world. I'm not sure what this is going to look like. So I'll just continue on. Um, And I think that it's so interesting that this is what has come about from that. And I love that you're talking about a methodology that can really help people move into that. Can Let's dive into how can a business leader really cultivate a sense of community? Because I think that that's what you guys have really managed to do with She Factor. So you can either one of you, you both can jump in however you want to do it. Well, to start off, when we first originally started Chief Factor, you know, it really initially was about connecting women in person and having these in-person relationships cultivated, finding people in your city that were like-minded and growth oriented. And you could talk about your goals and your dreams and your aspirations with, and 
it was amazing to see that. I mean, we had what we called squads, which are basically like chapters in four different cities. We were meeting monthly for happy hours and to see those relationships cultivate the same women coming every time, really getting to know them was amazing. And when COVID happened, obviously, like everyone else, we had to pivot, but it ended up being this huge blessing in disguise for us because we've been able to reach so many more women and cultivate such a stronger community through that. Um, you know, it, it really is about meeting women where they're at. So we have tons of different touch points and we understand that everyone learns differently and engage differently. So we have a podcast, a blog, a daily newsletter, and we also have our events, which have been huge, huge, huge for that community aspect. So we do monthly events and then we've also had bigger events like a virtual graduation party. And we're about to do another big summit in October that's focused on women in the workplace. And I think what it all comes down to is just listening to your audience and hearing from them what they need from you. And for us in this whole COVID situation, it was really that they needed the support and they needed fun. Like the, it was just everything in the world was so heavy and they just wanted fun. And, um, you know, they wanted to connect with other women and talk about topics that were exciting to them and not about work or the heavy stuff going on in the world. So we've been doing these virtual weekly happy hours and spend the same women coming every week and they've become close friends of mine and to see those communities cultivate and just thrive has been amazing. So for me, when I'm thinking about the way that I kind of had started, it was as when it came to community, I built it, I feel like within kind of my brand. And as far as the networking side of things, because everything for me was virtual from the very get go, that was how I kind of figured out what this kind of industry was going to look like. Now, looking back, I missed that kind of connection and the way that you're talking about your events. And I did right before COVID start to try to find local women that were also entrepreneurs that kind of wanted that sense of community. My question is, why do you believe that cultivating community is so important to the success of your business? Well, I come from the franchise industry and one of the most important things about franchising is sharing best practices and sharing ideas around your business and hopefully preventing our franchisees from making the mistakes that, you know, they would make if they were on their own, right? And so I look at it the same way with building a community for young women to help them launch their lives. If they can share ideas, share best practices about what they're doing to find the right job or work out or eat healthy or how to vote, whatever it is. Um, it just builds confidence, it builds camaraderie, it builds community. And it's a lot harder to actually meet people live these days, not even just because of COVID, but because of our dependence on social media and technology, which has been a blessing and a curse, as you well know. And so I think um, one of the things we found when we first did focus groups with She Factor the number one thing young women wanted was a live connection. They, they wanted to put down their phones, hang out with other women, have conversation, you know, sit around with magazines, cut out, making vision boards, having a cocktail, whatever it looked like, going on a hike together, but just really the ability to put aside the technology and connect live. Yes. No, I, it's true. I think I, that did make a huge difference for me when I was able to make that personal connection. And it, it's very different than from behind that screen that we're so used to, whether it's social media or even getting on Zoom calls. It definitely does make a very large difference. So one of the things that everyone seems to talk about is building a strong brand identity, right? No matter what the industry is, everybody wants to talk about, oh, you have to have a strong brand. How can we actually cultivate community within our brand. So no matter what our industry is, is there a way that we can actually build community with our audience? Whether you're a seasoned podcaster or just thinking of starting a podcast, you need to listen to Buzzcast from the folks at Buzzsprout. Here we go. Buzzcast covers everything a podcaster should know from marketing strategies and how to make money from your podcast to the latest and greatest tech and industry insights to keep you on the cutting edge. Follow Buzzcast by clicking the link in the description or go to buzzcast.buzzsprout.com and keep podcasting.
100%. I mean, I think we've seen that just in the different touch points I was talking about with our podcast and our blog and our daily newsletter. It's a, truly about meeting women where they're at in their life. And some people, we've found that in our audience, the women who come to our events are maybe not the same women that listen to our podcast or the women who get our daily newsletter are not the same women that read our blog. So having a touch point where you can create that com- that community and bring it all together in one place, which is obviously the brand, has been so important to us. And I think also just, you know, in this day and age, being a small business or a startup and then having these huge giant companies to go up against, you kind of just have to act like you are one of them. And you have to just put yourself in that situation and say, okay, we are a community. We're strong. We're big. We're doing the right things. We're following the right best practices. Um, You have to just fake it till you make it. And that's something that I think we've done even just in the sense of community is like we, we did start really small, but we have grown exponentially as we've moved virtual. I mean, we had probably 40 people at our or at our actual happy hours when we were doing them in person across four different cities. Granted, we had probably 350 people when we launched in a city. And now with our virtual events, we're getting up to 1,200 people every month. And we had 12,000 people join our virtual graduation party. So to see the need of women wanting to come together and giving them that touch point to find community, but then within that, just communicating their problems and their needs and um, and making them known that it's okay that they're going through those things. And we as founders have been right in their shoes. I think that's where our strong community comes from is they see the struggles that myself as a 25 year old, I'm going through. And Heidi wrote her book all as a letter to her 20 year old self on what she would have done differently in her journey through her 20s. So I think it's just that, that common, common experience and, coming together and understanding each other and having that, that feeling that everyone is there for you. Yes. No, I love that. And I do think that it's needed now more than ever for women to be able to do that. I'm not sure if you saw the most, there was a recent article that came out from a Pinterest executive where it was a female executive. I believe she was CFO or something along those lines, but she talked about how it was a boys club Pinterest was and how she got pushed out because she had views and took stances based on being a woman. And it was used against her because of that. So I think like you're talking about having that sense of community to be able to talk about the things that we are struggling with, because what we struggle with is very different than what a male struggles with um, as far as raising our babies and now homeschooling (laughs) and figuring out how it's all going to work is very different than what a man has to do, right? Well, and Jenny, you'd be shocked at some of the conversations I've had with executives as we've also tried to play in the corporate world. We call it She Factor Enterprise. And one of the key problems we're trying to solve um, in corporations is that um, Gen Z young women only stay at their jobs for an average of 18 months. And it's not because of what you think necessarily. It's because they don't have a sense of belonging and community. They feel very alone. And so we said, you know, why don't we help you build a community? And they're like, but we're leaving the men out of the conversation. And I'm like, the men can be part of the conversation, but we need a place where women can just be frank and authentic and talk real about issues that we face every day that the men might not. And we got so much pushback on that. It was shocking to me. And they're like, when are you going to do heat factor? I'm like, well, I have a son along with my three daughters. So that's important to me, but it's a special moment in time for women. And you know, we're all on the frontier of this new age for women and God bless all the women behind us that have fought so hard to get us here, but it's almost paralyzing sometimes with the choices and the the bravery, bravery we have to show. And yes, we can have a family and yes, we can have a career. And the poor young women that are out there right now are just like, oh my gosh, now I have to do even more. Now I have to have a brand, a personal brand, and I have to have a social media presence. And, you know, I have to be on LinkedIn and engaging and I have to be networking at all kinds of events and on Zoom calls constantly. So yeah. it's, it's, it's not as easy as it seems to uh, launch a great life, even if you're blessed to have a wonderful education and, you know, resources available. I love the way that you talked about how it, it, I actually want kind of want to go back to that a little bit. You said 18 months is Gen Z's normal amount of time that they'll stay at a position. From there, 
Do you feel that they go again to a co- different corporate position or are you seeing a lot of them will actually try to start for themselves? I think and Tori can speak a little bit to this about the gig economy and how young women are navigating that. I think that's a, a big draw. But ultimately, I think the 18 month thing is pretty consistent that they go 18 months and they flip to another company for 18 months, then they flip to another one. And it's really hard to get more women on, you know, Fortune 500 boards and in seat suite positions if they're hopping from company to company. So we've got to solve for that issue or we're going to have a, a, you know, a real problem solving the bigger issue, which is the C-suite and the board issue. Yeah, you, um, there's another statistic that goes off of that that says your first promotion is the most important. That's the one that determines whether or not you move your way up in a company and find success. And just to use myself as an example, I worked for an IT staffing company out of college and the, re- the retention was awful. I mean, people would leave after two weeks, after six months, the retention, um, the turnaround was like 50%. And then after a year, it went down to like 40%. And it was just this constant churn of employees all the time. And yes, they would put in the resources to train you and try and build that community and try and make you feel like you belong. But if you don't have that consistency and that mentorship and somebody who's going to help you up that line and promote you and give you the resources that you need to grow, it's not going to happen. And I think that we're seeing that not just in the staffing industry, that's a huge issue in the staffing industry, but all across corporate America. I think it's just these huge giant companies don't know how to connect with the individual and connect, especially with the individual woman. And it's, it's tough. And So women are just moving from job to job to find that happiness and find that balance. And I think work-life balance is especially an important topic for women my age. And it just isn't as easy as it seems for these companies to give you that because they expect so much of you. So I think that's partially why we're seeing the jump is finding that work-life balance and whether or not that means they go to just do their own thing. That's hard too. It's hard to start your own business and have the funding and the experience and the growth to do that as well. Well, I think there's one other thing that's really important to Gen Z women and men is mission. What's the company's mission? How are they going to change the world for the better? And I talk to young people a lot about voting with your dollar. You know, you don't necessarily have to go regulate an industry. How about we just spend our money where we think companies are doing the right thing? And same with your time and your talent. What if you work for a company that, you know, shares your passion for a certain issue? And so that's a very important um, thing that young people are looking at, too, and and why they hop around a lot as well. And they'll be sometimes sold a bill of goods that a company is wanting to do the right thing or says they're going to do the right thing. And they get inside and figure out that that's not the case. So they'll hop for that reason too. So interesting because it is, it, it feels like, especially right now during it being an election year, we won't talk politics. <laughs> uh, I can't even talk politics with family. So it, it is, it's very important that we understand where those missions and those values kind of align. And it makes sense why they would end up choosing to lead. Let's go back to conv- cultivating community. Do you think that there's easy ways to do it on social media to build within your brand and really grow that com- sense of community? Oh, that is the question, is it not? (laughs) Social media has been the bane of our existence in some ways. It's so complicated and crowded and expensive. I mean, you go to talk to a company about helping you manage your social media. It's $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. And it's, you know, and everyone wants to do it organically, but it takes so much work to build great content and be consistent and to, you know, actively figure out how to grow it. So we've just kind of let it happen organically. And, you know, we're not necessarily as big as we want to be on social media, but in other ways, we're growing far bigger than we ever thought with our podcast and the daily emails and the virtual events. So we kind of figured that that'll happen eventually. And the people that we do have that are our brand ambassadors and our social media kind of warriors are incredible. And they help us create good content. We're really committed to staying true to our brand on the content side. So I think we give up a little bit of growth for that, but I think it's quality over quantity. Yeah. I think it's so important just managing the brand. I manage all of the aspects of the brand right now. And, you know, social media is one of those things where people are dying to see authenticity and they're dying to see realness and not just the fluff and 
the quote unquote influencer of Instagram, you know, it's, it's connection and it's that just vulnerability. And I think that we've done a really good job of that. And yes, the growth has been slower, but the women that do follow us and are in, are engaged are really engaged with us and they follow us. They come to our events. They, you know, they do all, they read all the touch points or engage a lot of touch points and they give us feedback. And I think a big important part of growing these days is having some skin in the game when it comes to influencers. It's tough and also very expensive, but what we've done is we've just focused on really small micro influencers that align really closely with our brand and who are our target market so they can experience what we're doing and then share by word of mouth how amazing it has been for them and how much they love our community. So that's been really important to us is just finding people on the way up and we grow with them and they grow with us and we want to help other women and other small businesses grow as well. So that's been a really key part, even with our events, getting speakers who are up and coming and who have something to say, but it's really hard for them to get these big booked events or be a part of these experiences. It's expensive as well. And it's all about just that give and take. We want you to grow. You want us to grow. Let's all do this together and be all one. Well, with the exception of our big brand yeah. ambassador, who's Caitlin Bristow um, yeah. from The Bachelorette, who's on Dancing with the Stars right now. And, you know, Caitlin has been such a great partner in our brand. It initially started as, you know, hey, come to our launch party. We'll pay you to be there, be our celebrity. And we've built this friendship and relationship where Caitlin's a big fan and we're a huge fan of hers. And she's an entrepreneur. She's a go-getter. She's kind of the essence of what she factors about. And now she goes above and beyond to help us and help get the word out. And, you know, it's, it's more of a, um, you know, a friendship than it is a brand partnership. And that's the case with a lot of our influencers. And my guess is it's your company is very much in line with her mission, right? So it goes back to what you talked about, that her it comes across authentic and there's the engagement that builds that audience that is 100% behind what you're trying to really accomplish with your business. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to build a community um, based on what our community wants. So it's almost like this back and forth, which you're probably very familiar with. And you have to just be flexible and nimble and listen very carefully and watch the metrics. And that's where my business brain comes in and building my Camp Bow wow brand is I know how important it is to measure progress and measure return on investment. And if you only have, a, you know, very little dollars, which, uh, you know, a lot of influencers that are just starting out and brand ambassadors do, you have to really track your return on investment, whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasure. Yes. Such great advice. I love it. So are there any resources that have helped you with cultivating your community, podcasts, books, anything like that? I think just following other brands and companies that are similar to ours and seeing what they're putting out there has been really important for us. And in all honesty, there really isn't something like what we're doing out there, which has really been fun. There's a lot of things for entrepreneurs or, you know, uh, working women or women in business, women in tech, yes. fitness, like there's all these different niche groups, but there's not one thing that focus on, focuses on the holistic aspect of, especially for women in their twenties. And it's been really cool to see that come to fruition. And I think the number one place that I always pull my inspiration from and in running the brand is just watching other entrepreneurs and seeing what they're doing and engaging with their brands and asking questions, reaching out to them and saying, what's working for you? What's not working for you? And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that there's one specific podcast or book or, um, resource that we've that we've looked at but following the girl bosses and the rachel hollis's and the create and cultivate. and cultivates and they have these amazing communities and that's who we're aspiring to be but more for the women in their 20s and showing up for them because it's there's no no one else showing up for them right now really I think that was a great piece of advice, though, because it is modeling and seeing what others are doing, and what's working for them. I always suggest for clients to go and get on other people's lists, see what that process looks like, how often are they engaging, what are they asking you in their emails, and then following them on social media to, to see exactly what their social media looks like. Such a great suggestion. And reaching out. I mean, I've had 
I've reached out to a lot of my idols and influencers that I love who are doing similar things and companies attending virtual conferences right now or attending actual conferences. I went to Create and Cultivate's conference in San Francisco last September, and I made such amazing connections and I got to meet so many amazing entrepreneurs and doing things like that. People are willing to say yes to you. And people are willing to help you and people are willing to talk about their journey. And you just have to be willing to reach out and ask the question. I think that's one of the reasons that these sort of your business in particular works for women because women are willing to share. Where I feel like men are more likely to compete and not want to kind of share. Whereas we're open books. This is our situation. This is how we've overcome it. You may have to find a different way because of your personality or your situation in life, but we are, we're open and willing to share so that we can empower other women to move forward. So I appreciate that. Well, and Jenny, on the flip side, one of the things we hear um, from young women is how competitive it is because they feel like they come from this sense of scarcity, that there's only a number of slots available. And we're trying to shift them out of that mindset. Like now companies are so on board with making sure that they have diverse leaders and that there's more opportunity for everybody. But on the flip side, we've got to teach the young women how to be able to go after it and to ask for the business and to ask for the promotion and to, you know, put that shy, I need to just wait till it's my turn um, perspective away and, and make it happen for themselves. I mean, think about how many men are out there in leadership positions, C-level executive positions, starting their own companies. There's so much more room for women to fill that space and we don't have to compete against each other. There's so much room for us to grow and be at that level. We just need to take that initiative and teach women to be fearless and directors of their life and lead their life the way they want to do it. And that's what She Factor is all about is cultivating that that drive confidence. and confidence yeah. in, in every young woman. I think confidence is the number one reason I started She Factor and why I do this. I love doing it. There's just a lack of confidence um, in young women these days. And I don't I didn't, haven't researched why or how it evolved. I just want to solve the problem. And I want to build young women up and give them the confidence to go out and get whatever they want in the world. I feel like part of the reason that they, many women just assume that you're born confident, that women, the ones that you see are that are confidently doing their job and working with, you know, at home or in corporate, wherever it is, they assume that they were born that way. Yeah. But in reality, it's, practice. It took them years to build up that confidence. And you said it earlier, you have to fake it until you make it. So it is, you kind of put out that sense of confidence and it only grows into that. It's kind of a way of manifesting it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a great book um, that we've talked about in the last couple of days is Angela Duckworth's Grit. And I think grit is one of the pieces of the puzzle that we don't focus on as much as we need to. And it's something that can be learned. It doesn't have to be innately in you, but learning grit, learning fearlessness, learning that failure is just part of the process, that taking risks is necessary to move up the ladder or start your own business, whatever you want to do, or to reach your fitness goal. It's, it's, you know, risk is something that you have to get comfortable with. And um, I think that's, one of the biggest issues I see out there. So I'd highly recommend that book, Grit. Um, I think it's great for young women to read. Thank you for that. We will make sure to link to that in the show notes for sure. Yes, I truly believe in failing forward. It's <laughs> part of your journey. It really, truly is. Where are the best places for my audience to follow along with you and connect with you guys? So we're obviously active on Instagram at the she factor on Instagram and come to our events. I mean, I think that's where you get the biggest taste of what we're about and seeing what we're doing and how to engage. And it's just so necessary right now in this world that we're living in to, to be able to focus on your goals and focus on you and do what you need to do to be happy. So engage with us on social, come to our events. Um, you can find all of our event information on social. Read the book. Yeah. Read the book, <laughs> download an app, the app, the she factor app. We have an app that's really awesome. Helps you set goals and gamify your life and figure out who you are and how you, how you tick. And then the podcast, um, you can follow me at Tori Ganahl, G A N A H L on Instagram for all info on the podcast. And, um, Heidi is Heidi Ganahl at Heidi Ganahl. And I think that's it. 
<laughs> That's perfect. And the website is thesheetfactor.com if anyone wants to go check out every, all of the things. All right. That is excellent. And we're going to make sure everything will be linked to in the show notes. If people can, when they're listening to podcasts, can pop over and just click through to be able to find everything. I appreciate you both so much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for having us. And thanks for all the work you do. And and I would tell your community, you know, go out, kick some buns and do what you love and be fearless. All right. Well, there you have it. These ladies were obviously a force to be reckoned with and are thoughts and practices are very, very similar. So I hope that you will make sure that you pop over to their Instagram, The She Factor, and make sure that you are following along with them, as well as make sure that you check out the events that they are hosting. They are doing a ton virtual right now because of obviously of COVID. I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time to listen in. I would love if you would tag me on your Instagram stories and tell me your biggest takeaway from this episode. Tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose, as well as if you have not already left me a reading or review on your favorite podcasting app, I would so appreciate it. Okay, guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 